Hey guys, welcome to the new video. Have you ever had that burst of energy when you are super excited to learn something new, like a language or skill? You dive right into putting in all efforts, but then after a few weeks or months, you just feel completely burned out. You start telling yourself, I've lost my passion, can't make it. Or maybe you've been studying a language or picking up a new skill, and it feels like you've been stuck in the same spot forever. You must be wondering why I'm doing everything but I just don't feel I'm progressing. Well, I want to say it's completely normal in a learning journey. It could also be a signal, time to review your study habits. In today's video, we will be tackling those bad study habits that are holding you back. We will also be talking about the reasons that cause you to burn out and how to fix them and how to replace bad habits with good ones. If you are new to this channel, I'm Zoe, PhD candidate in sociology in France and in Germany. I'm also polyglot who speaks seven languages. If you like this video, don't forget to click on like and share with others. So let's get into the video. When you are overly critical, you will start feeling like you are not smart enough to learn a language, even though no language is hard to learn. You might find yourself saying, this is a difficult language, or I don't have enough time. It becomes a habit of quitting and making excuses. On the other hand, when you are not critical enough, you will notice that your progress in the language is slow and it feels like it's taking forever. So how can you avoid these two situations? A good middle ground is to set a realistic plan that includes long-term, mid-term, and short-term goals. Short-term goals consist of a daily task while your mid-term goals help you track your progress on a weekly basis. Long-term goals can be set on a monthly or annual basis for each level. It's important to constantly measure how much you have accomplished. Remember, the goals are definite, but the plan isn't set in stone. Be flexible and embrace adaptability. Another helpful tip is to ask questions and stay open to other people's experiences. That's why I've opened my Discord community so you guys can share your experiences. Surrounded by yourself with supportive people who share the same passion can also motivate you and help you set realistic goals. If you want to join us, just click the link in the description box. This is a common problem caused by living in an age of open source information and easily accessible knowledge. Unfortunately, quality and quantity have an inverse relationship, at least in terms of internet knowledge. While it might be great to have a lot of information online, it's a slippery slope. If you get greedy and start hoarding resources, thinking that the more you have, the more you will learn, you are mistaken. In fact, you don't need that many apps or books. One mistake people make is using several apps that perform the same function. For example, using multiple flashcards and space repetition system apps all at once, you only need one. Try to find one app for each skill you are trying to learn and stick to it. Don't overwhelm yourself with choices because in the end, they all have the same function. On the other hand, relying solely on one learning method is also a mistake. While there's nothing wrong with using traditional methods like books, which have worked for centuries, or relying only on an app, it's great to discover a language, you know, but not enough if you want to reach a good level. Nowadays, we do a lot of typing, but writing is the best way to memorize. And you still need plenty of real conversation and listening exercises. So try to find a middle ground between traditional and new methods. That's why I always suggest having one main learning resource where you spend 50% of your study time. It could be a book, an app, an online course, or a series of YouTube videos. The key is to choose something well-structured that help you learn progressively. Avoid jumping from one random video to another as it can lead to confusion and hinder your progress. Next, I recommend using one flashcard app for memorizing new vocabulary and one podcast or YouTube channel for listening or speaking exercises. Okay, you can use a platform that combines both functions like LingoPie is a website where you can learn languages by watching videos, including documentaries, series, and movies. They offer content for different proficient levels. There is a one new amazing feature on LingoPie which allows you to watch Netflix using their Chrome extension. You have dual subtitles, you can view the script on the right side, click on new words and translations, and save them along with original audio in your flashcards and review whenever you want. 
is amazing, right? If you're learning these languages, you can completely rely on Lingopi as your second learning resource to improve your vocabulary, listening, and speaking skill. If you are interested in Lingopi, you can click the link in the description box to get a seven day free trial. You will often hear that you need to increase your word count to study new words on a daily basis. However, focusing only on numbers instead of truly understanding the words is a very bad habit. This approach can lead to speaking a language without understanding the logic behind it. Those words won't stick in your long-term memory. Sometimes it's important to review and understand words clearly before moving on to new ones. So prioritize daily reviews and make then your top priority before learning new words. Otherwise, everything will quickly pile up and you will feel overwhelmed with a large number of reviews. You will end up losing on both fronts, having pending reviews and struggling with new words. When you're setting up your SRS app, there's no need to aim for a large daily target. As a general rule of thumb, try not to exceed 15 new words per day. Instead, prioritize reviewing and ensure that you have understood and memorized the old words. This is especially important for the 1,000 basic words at the beginning. As the book Atomic Habits says, all big things come from small beginnings. So take your time and digest the information. If you are interested in learning vocabulary effectively, you can check out these two videos. The biggest problem. Let me share an anecdote. Once I received a comment on YouTube like, I've tried all your methods, Zoe, and they don't work. I wonder if the person only tried it once and concluded that it doesn't work. I want to say that all the language learning methods I share on my channel require consistency. Language learning is all about accumulation. There's no magic pill. Just like with exercise, you can't gain muscle after one or two workouts. Even if you only practice once a week, you can only maintain your level. But the solution is simple and easy. Before starting each level, you should have a clear understanding of the following. What material will be starting for this level? What's the desired outcome of this level? Based on that, you can start setting your plan. Estimate the number of new words you can study according to your daily routine. Set realistic goals, starting small and gradually increasing. Many people lose consistency because their planning phase was unrealistic and their goals were unattainable. So invest in good planning before starting each level. I know the sad truth is that your daily life is chaotic. It will be extremely difficult to learn. The lack of routine leads to a lack of consistency. If your average day is filled with work, try to find small pockets of time throughout the day. Identify the repetitive patterns in your daily routine. For example, you can start with review or learn a couple of new words in the morning, then do some passive listening exercises while walking or driving. But the most important thing is to establish the habit. On average, it takes 21 to 30 days to create a routine and stick to it. Like Octavia Butler saying, first of all, go inspiration. Habits is more dependable. Habits will sustain you whether you are inspired or not. If you want to learn techniques for incorporating tiny habits or atomic habits into your language learning journey, especially if you have a full-time job, checking out this video. Okay, we often say that a studying should be an enjoyable activity, but that's not entirely true. You can't expect to study for three hours a day and enjoy every single moment of it. There are two ways to memorize things, through repetitions and through the release of adrenaline, which is related to stress. Just think about it. How is that you can easily remember bad events that happened in your life? It's similar to how trauma works. When you apply this concept to studying it, it starts to make a lot of sense. That's why you often hear phrases like failure is the mother of success and you learn better through making mistakes. For example, when you move to a country where the language is spoken and start interacting with locals, you might feel stressed and afraid of making mistakes or embarrassing yourself. However, that stress actually helps you remember those mistakes and avoid repeating them. On the other hand, when you study in isolation and rely on repetition, it's challenging to hold yourself accountable. That's why immersion is important and it's crucial to accept that the studying isn't always supposed to be fun and comfortable. Now, let's talk about passion. People often overlook the fact that passion is 
just a mere interest in certain topic. However, interest alone is not enough to accomplish goals. It guides you in a direction of the path you want to walk in life and it won't walk you through it. To complete that path, you need a strong will, the ability to tolerate pressure, push yourself and adapt. People often say, I lost my passion. But it's natural to sometimes lose interest. However, if you keep repeating that to yourself, you will become a quitter. Emotions constantly change according to our environment and we can't rely on them to get things done. Sometimes you just have to push yourself through. We must all suffer one of two things, the pain of a discipline or the pain of a regret and disappointment. Passion, while valuable, is just a starting point. It must be complemented by discipline and adaptability to achieve long-term goals. As I said 1000 times, language learning is a journey of accumulation, not an instant transformation. It requires dedication, planning, and willingness to step out of your comfort zone. That's why we love learning language, isn't it? I hope this video can help you diagnose your current study problems. I hope you can avoid these bad habits. Feel free to share your experience in the comment section. If you have any questions, write in a comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on like and share it. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. See you soon, guys. Bye.